Hi everyone, this is Stephanie at Hightower Stitching. This is an exciting day for me today because I know that when I make the final video that my project is finished. And today, this is sort of put together, this is video 198C, which means that there was an A and a B before it, and this should be close to the end. One of the things that I know in the description, it puts my address for YouTube and also for the my little store on Etsy. And I'll show that at the end. I have it set up, but I think it's, well, it's not too big. There it goes. Hopefully you can see that. If you go to the YouTube address, you can see all the videos in one place. And if you go to High Tower Stitching, you'll see some of the things that I've done during the, this time together. And with that said, we're going to start. If you look straight in the middle, and I I know you see my workroom, but this was the best place for me to do this today and to hang this up. This is the first of the two um, the quilts that I hand-stitched from vintage blocks, butterfly blocks, that had embroidery around the outside, the blanket stitch, and the uh, antennas in the body. And this was made somewhere, the lifespan of the person who made the 42 blocks I had was between 1875 and 1944. So this is so interesting to me because even the material that they were, that the material was mounted on, that cream colored back, was real interesting because it was, it felt thickish but when I rinsed it out, thinking maybe there was starch or something like that on it, it came back just the same. And I said, well, I don't know how hard this is going to be. So I went and grabbed a needle to see if I could get the needle to go through it. And it slid through it just like butter. So that took care of that problem. And the fun thing about this, too, is there are still basting stitches in some of these long running stitches where... Uh, the person had taken and stitched it down there. And then this is sort of like a window effect because I wanted everybody to be able to look out the window and see all those butterflies. And because there were 42 and they were going to be ch fixed for two people, two sisters, their mother had inherited the blocks and they were in a closet. You might remember me saying that, all wrapped up. And... The one day they were just cleaning out and they found him again and she thought of me, which I thought was wonderful. And so this is what I came up with. This is the first one. The back is the same as the outer edge on here. These are hand stitched. I did mach machine stitch all of the sashing and all that because I wanted to make sure it held up. Well, one thing that I did was I embroidered it on both things, both my round floor hoop and my old embroidery hoop. But <clears throat> no matter which one I was working on, <clears throat> when I put the hoop top on it, it would rub against the butterflies. And so I took like four pieces of fabric, if I needed four or three, and I would take and lay those along the edge and on the other side, any place there was a butterfly that was going to hit when I put the top rack on there, when I set the top oval or the top round piece on there. And that made me feel really good because this is fragile in its way. The uh, It is not turned um, top stitch down. It's just lay down and then the pieces are, are sewn around it and the basting is what held it in place. Uh, that's the first one. And I needed to purchase five yards of material. That's what I wanted because I wanted to make sure I had enough for whatever I did with the borders and everything. So I couldn't get 10 yards of one. And I thought, well, the two sisters are different. So there's nothing wrong. And the and all of the butterflies are different colors. All the way through on both of them, there's never a repeat. 
And so I said, well, I can make these different. And then the one that's going to give it to her sister, they figure out how they want to do it. And so this is the yellow one. And the yellow turned out really well. Now I want to do a little bit of a close-up. And the pattern I did just had to do with flowers because of butterflies and the flowers. And somebody else had already noticed that around the antennas I had a heart. And for some reason, I just like hearts. And so most quilts that I do, there's a quilt, there's a heart or two in different places. And this was hand-stitched. And the border was hand-stitched. And it's a nice, simple the borders are not the same. I did those differently and the sashing differently on the two on the two quilts. Just because I tell you sometimes you get bored, so make get be pre prepared for what you're going to do. And with small stitching, you can sort of see this is the sashing for this one and those are all the same. And then here's one of the butterflies or flower in the corner. And then there's flowers in that corner. And then I would switch it up and I would put hearts in the corner. But I always had a flower in that top left corner so that they were like flying over there into the, into the flower. And the borders were really fun. This one I did sort of a loop and then a... Um, an oval shape on the outside edge. And then for the yellow, I did a variation of that with loops with a little diamond hanging down. And on the outside edge, I just took my round shape and made two circles and then connected the pattern all along. And actually, it was really easy to get started on the butterflies. But when I got ready to start on the outside of, um, layers of border, that one really got me because I wanted it to look just, just right. And finally, I wanted to share the quilt pouches with you. And it all started because I like putting my pieces when I'm carrying them around the quilts that I'm going to take somewhere. It's just to take an old pillowcase. And because I know exactly what's in it. And this one happens to be sort of long. And it's just an accident because I picked it up. But... The last time I made a series of quilts for a family that were made for from their father's shirts, I had four to make, and I thought, I'd like to do something special for these when I get finished. And so each one of them, I made a sample of a pillowcase, just use a pillowcase pattern, and then I slid the quilts inside that, and I thought, okay, that was fun, and it looked good, and it was light, so... I want to do something special for this lady. And I came up with the idea of the pouch, like the old male pouch. And if you look at it, you can see I figured out, then the other thing was I figured out what to do with the other two butterflies that I had left. And they became the part of the flap. And the flap Velcros. And when you open it up, I finished the inside, and then I have this great pocket inside. And when you fold the quilt, you just slide it in there, and then go ahead and take and seal that. And this is that 100% cotton, so this should be great. So there was one for one quilt, and then here was the one for the other. And I just wanted you to see that even if you can fold it down, even if it's not at the Velcro, it doesn't matter because this is heavy enough, it's going to sit. But with the Velcro on this one, they're both about the same. It just happened to be a little higher. This one actually is, well, it's about exact, almost the same, and it wasn't going to matter. But I think, too, I was thinking about, well, what size quilt could fit in this? And knowing how I can fold up the quilts and easily get them into a pillowcase, I was pretty sure that when I made one, that it would fit in there. So that's the end of that, and that's the pouch. And this is Stephanie at Hightower Stitching. Thank you for watching today. I hope you like this project. 
Am I tired? Yeah, I am a little tired, and I am will be happy when I see this go in the mail. Thank you for watching.